The 4th of July, otherwise known as American Independence Day, is coming up. This day is traditionally celebrated with big barbecues, playing backyard games, and of course, fireworks. And while fireworks are very visually exciting, they also produce a hefty amount of sound. Whether you're lighting off firecrackers at home or going to go watch a community fireworks show, you need to know the risks and how to protect your hearing. But before we get into it, we'd really appreciate if you could give this video a thumbs up to bring videos like these to a wider audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet already hit that subscribe button with notification bell, make sure you do that too so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. We really appreciate it. Now, if you're like me, anytime I see fireworks, I'm wondering how the heck do they work? Fireworks get their brilliant color and boom from an explosion of small black powder-filled pellets called stars. Down on the ground, a first fuse is lit, sending the firework up into the air. A short time after, a second fuse ignites, causing an explosion of color and sound. It's no secret the fireworks are loud, but depending on their size and how they're designed, some fireworks can reach between 150 to 175 decibels. But let me add some context for just how loud is too loud. Safe exposure limits, also called noise doses, have been established by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. As you can see in this chart, NIOSH and OSHA have slightly different safe exposure limits, but for the purposes of this video, we will be using the OSHA standards. According to OSHA standards, anything 90 decibels and below is generally safe to listen to for a period of eight hours. For example, average conversation generally occurs around 60 decibels, making it safe for you to chat away all day long. Sounds above 90 decibels can still be safe to listen to, but require closer attention to just how long you're listening. According to OSHA, the general rule of thumb is that after 90 decibels, each five decibel increase in intensity cuts your safe exposure limit in half. For example, if we increase the intensity from 90 decibels to 95 decibels, similar to the intensity of a gas-powered lawnmower, our safe exposure limit goes from eight hours to four hours. If we increase another five decibels to 100 decibels, similar to a high-powered blender, our safe exposure limit gets cut in half again from four hours to two hours. However, if it's taking you two hours to blend your smoothie, may I suggest a new blender? Once we hit 120 decibels, no amount of unprotected exposure is safe, even for just a few minutes. Sudden or extended loud noise exposure can cause temporary changes in hearing, permanent hearing loss, and even ringing or buzzing in the ears called tinnitus. And if you don't believe me, believe my patient who went completely deaf in one ear after a firecracker went off just five inches from his head. At-home firecrackers can get up to 120 decibels, no problem. And commercial fireworks can get up to 150 decibels, causing instant damage to your hearing, depending on how close you are to them. This is because distance helps to lower the intensity of a sound allowing you to listen for a longer period of time safely. This effect, called the inverse square law, means that every time you double your distance away from a sound source, the sound pressure level decreases by six decibels. Imagine you're standing 10 feet away from a loudspeaker at a concert, and the sound pressure level was 105 decibels. You can only listen safely at that distance for about 60 minutes. If you were to step back another 10 feet, you'd be able to listen safely for about two hours, and if you doubled your distance from 20 feet back to 40 feet back, now you can listen safely for over four hours. The relationship is clear. If you can't control the volume, then you can increase the distance. And if you can't control the distance, then you can lower the volume. And if you don't have control over the distance or the volume, it's time to use hearing protection. Knowing what we know about sound level and distance it's important that during commercial firework displays, like those at community events, that you're seated at least 500 feet away from the launch site. Luckily, most states already have laws in place requiring the viewing area be positioned at least this distance away or more. But in the case of at-home firecrackers, these fuses are much shorter, making it much harder to get a safe distance away from the blast. In this situation, the best thing you can do to protect your hearing is to wear hearing protection. Foam earplugs are a great choice for adults because they're cheap 
easy to purchase at drugstores, and highly effective when used correctly. Foam earplugs should not be just pushed and squished into your ear canal, leaving them easily visible and hanging out of your ear. In order to reach their full effectiveness, foam earplugs should be rolled slowly between your fingers and your thumb with some light pressure until it becomes so thin you could stick it through a straw. This thin, long shape allows you to place the foam plug deep in your ear canal, and once in place, it will expand, blocking the ear canal and dampening the sound. If inserted appropriately, foam hearing protection should only be visible from the side, but not from the front. For children and some adults, foam hearing protection may be too large for smaller ear canals. In this case, over-the-ear hearing protection can be a perfect solution, especially since they can be used again and again. I really like several of the available style options for over-the-ear hearing protection from 3M, not only because they serve as hearing protection, but they can also double as Bluetooth headphones, allowing you to listen to music or audiobooks while protecting your hearing. Hearing protection is widely available at big box stores, drug stores, even sporting goods and outdoor stores, and of course, online at a variety of price points, but starting at just a couple of dollars. So we'll definitely put some links in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. But if you happen to experience a close range firecracker or firework explosion, or feel like you have any hearing loss or ringing or buzzing after the fourth, you should definitely contact a hearing healthcare professional to get an immediate hearing test. During this test, your provider will record your responses to tones in each ear and plot your results on an audiogram. These responses, called thresholds, help determine if the loud noise exposure has caused a temporary threshold shift or a permanent threshold shift. Temporary threshold shift is a temporary hearing loss from loud noise exposure that returns to near baseline levels after just hours or days. But even if your hearing returns back to normal this time, a temporary threshold shift is a sure sign that whatever loud noise you were exposed to was definitely too loud and had the potential to damage your hearing. Repeated exposure to loud noises, especially those that cause temporary threshold shifts, can quickly turn into permanent threshold shifts that do not see any recovery. In the case of my patient that I was talking about earlier, this happened to be just a one-time event that left him with permanent hearing loss in one ear. Hearing loss from loud noise exposure is often visualized on an audiogram with a characteristic noise notch occurring somewhere between three and 6,000 hertz. Some forms of acute noise exposure can be treated through the use of steroids, but the treatment window is very brief, so do not wait in getting your symptoms assessed. Fortunately, noise-induced hearing loss is the only type of hearing loss that is entirely preventable, so long as you know your risks and how to protect your hearing. So don't cancel your 4th of July plans just yet. Just make sure that you bring and wear hearing protection to protect your hearing for years to come.